Welcome to Flock Talk, Flock Talk, the podcast where we feature your favorite authors and narrators. Hosted by Craig Hart and Sarah Hannon. Visit us today at PinkFlamingoProductions.com. And now, Flock Talk. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to Flock Talk. My name is Craig Hart, and I'm here with my trusty co-host, Sarah Hannon. How are things going in your world, Sarah? Uh, they're good. I have three children at school, and I am by myself. That's the best. Everybody at school, then, eh? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I had a sick kid home yesterday, uh, and that was awful. And so he's now at school. He tried briefly to pretend he was still ill. Was like, <laughs> I've been there. But uh, after breakfast, which, which is when he was doing his little performance, after that, he started running around the basement like a maniac. It's like, all right, you're busted. <laughs> Anyway, I guess we should get into today's interview, and we should probably be on our best behavior so we don't get fired, because Sarah, we've got the other Sarah, the big boss, in the house. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How are you guys? Good. It's early. It's very early. It is early. (sighs) Sarah Puckett started her audiobook career like she does most things in life, busting in and making it hers. She learned quickly how to cater to all aspects of the process, including acting, producing, and engineering. After conquering that, she looked for higher hills to climb. When she didn't find one to her liking, she built her own, which she called Pink Flamingo Productions. Now, having acquired two other indie publishing companies, we want to know what's next. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks. That was a really good introduction. That was adorable. (laughs) Thanks. That's why I was late. (laughs) (laughs) I know. So, Sarah, tell us a little bit about Pink Flamingo Productions. Like, what, What is it exactly? It's a production and publishing company um, for indie authors to use our services. So we have two different types of tracks. They can either just produce with us or we publish audiobooks as well. What prompted you to start PFP? There are a lot of you know various options in the audio production world. What sets PFP apart from the others? Well, the reason I started it was because I was doing a lot of this producing on my own already um, with the authors that I worked with. And I just wanted to have a place where I could help my authors find other narrators as well and other authors find narrators. So it just kind of snowballed into what it is now. In the beginning, it was really just supposed to be me (laughs) helping (laughs) helping my authors. Um, But it blew up and and everybody seemed, you know, they liked the process that I had and and we brought in more narrators and more narrators and it just kind of snowballed into what it is. It's obviously grown beyond what you originally planned. Did the growth surprise you or does the state of audiobooks right now, does that make sense to you that it would happen that way? It does make sense. Um, it surprised me in that I didn't expect it to do that. And it wasn't something that I was that I had started it for. So that was surprising. But, you know, the way that the audiobook growth is right now is it just makes sense that it is doing so well. Audiobooks clearly are growing. I've seen you know ongoing articles about how every quarter it grows by often double digits. Why do you think that is? Why is the shift in media happening, do you think? I think it's time, you know. I mean, not everybody has as much time to sit down and read a book and and they can, you know, listen to audiobooks on their commute. They can listen to them while they're in the doctor's office. They can listen to them while they're cleaning, you know, with their kids while they're sitting there watching their son's baseball game. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I it's just super accessible to be able to do even while you're working, if you know, depending on the type of job you have. It's just I think that's probably the biggest reason. It's just time, people's time. They don't have as much time anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, with and with the growth of one industry, it, it tends to give rise to other types of ventures. For example, we're seeing the onslaught of AI in audiobooks and narration and whatnot. What is Pink Flamingo's stance on AI narrated audiobooks? Hell no. <laughs> Succinct and delightful. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we are not ever going to be a company that embraces AI for narration. So, What does a human bring to an audiobook that AI cannot and may never be able to do? Emotion, passion, 
um, the ability to connect with the text in a way that is needed for the listener to be able to connect to the text as well. And not even just the performance aspect of it, but the community aspect as well. You know, I mean, the amount of authors that I am friends with now and have built these wonderful relationships with just because I've narrated their work, you really miss out on that. So, yeah, it seems to me as I look back through the history of entertainment and art, the key has always been that human connection, one human creating something, a painting a piece of music, a book, now audiobooks, the thing that makes that matter to the person who's on the receiving end of that has been that human connection. That's why they identify. That's why art makes a difference in people's lives. And I, I just feel like if we get into the, if we open the door to AI, a robot essentially creating our, our art for us, I think that's a bit of a scary place. And, and I'm certainly not one of these people who is against technology. I love technology. But this is something completely different that in a way threatens our, our humanity in this, in this sense. Not to be hyperbolic, but it, it, does, it does worry me. Oh, yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, I spent almost 20 years in early childhood education. And the idea of the robot narrating things for young children and sort of like they're already so indoctrinated into their devices and things that are not human. I, I, I worry that taking away more and more of what, you know, introduces them to different people and different types of people and different experiences, um, they're losing that more and more and more already. That concerns me about AI. Not that they're listening to Pink Flamingo books at, you know, age two, but... <laughs> Please, God, no. <laughs> but that is a really good point. Well, I saw this, you know, back when we did virtual learning with with my twins during the pandemic, and I saw some social consequences for that for them, like how they weren't connecting with classmates in the same way, weren't connecting with their teachers in the same mm -hmm. way. And that's just, to me, almost a window into what could happen on a massive scale if we're living in a completely virtual world, essentially. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about genre. What sort of genres does Pink Flamingo offer? Romance. Pink Flamingo is full romance. So dark, um, erotica, sweet, I, just everything. Paranormal. <laughs> so all romance genres and subgenres. Um, and then we have Fireside and Northern Lake that have their own separate genres. So Fireside is more thriller, horror, mystery, sci-fi. Northern Lake is um, more of the general fiction, women's literature, nonfiction, cozy mysteries, kind of the lighter type stuff. So we have a division for everything. <laughs> yeah, you've got, it, we've got everything covered. I've heard the term independent together in talking about Pink Flamingo and its various divisions. What does independent together in mean in terms of the business? So it just means that all of our divisions are separate. They have their own people running them. Um, each division has an executive producer and their own producers that are handling the clients and, and the work. You know, each division has access to Pink Flamingo's resources and support, being that Pink Flamingo is the parent company. So we have all of the processes and, and everything down already. Now, how would an author sign up with you? Like, what, what do they need to do next if they are interested in producing or publishing through Pink Flamingo or Fireside or Northern Lake? Sure. So we have we have a pitch. So for our publishing, we have a pitch form on our on each website that you can go the author can go on and, and pitch their titles in that way. For production, they also there's also a form on the website that they can fill out and it will give us basically for a consult. So they can either have a consult through email or through Zoom um, with one of our uh, producers. What about narrators? What if uh, there's a narrator out there who's like, I want to do that. What should they do? Well, we have a narrator roster and they have access to it on all of the websites. It's, I believe, on the very first page. You can join our roster. Now, I heard you talk earlier about the relationship between people in a business setting and it seems to me as I'm looking through Pink Flamingo and my experience with Pink Flamingo so far is that one of the things it values is 
working hand in hand with the authors it signs. Like it's not, it doesn't, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's, uh, you sign up, we do the work and off you go. It seems like there's more of a relationship. Is, is my, am I accurate in saying that? Oh yeah, for sure. That's, I think one of the biggest things as far as I'm concerned, where when I was started narrating was building those good relationships with my authors. And it just came over to Pink Flamingo because especially with something this personal as personal as a not somebody's novel you know you you just want to have those good relationships in place absolutely where does the name pink flamingo come from oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> so i one time did photos for myself wearing a flamingo skirt and after that i got flamingos in the mail all the time and apparently it just became my thing <laughs> that flamingos are like you know apparently my favorite animal now so <laughs> we when i started the production company i was asking my husband and you know my husband's never shown um you know with pink he's not a part of pink flamingo but he really is like the brains behind it he gives us all of my marketing ideas and stuff like that so shout out to him but uh, he was the one that said, what about Pink Flamingo Productions? So here we are. <laughs> That's fantastic. It obviously hit hit a chord, so it worked. Yeah. <laughs> now we have a series of fun bonus questions. Just answer off the top of your head. Are you ready for this? Sure. You don't sound convinced. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be any animal, what would it be? A shark. Not a flamingo. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although they are pretty. So maybe. Well, I've noticed, too, you're talking about people sending you all this stuff. Every time there's a flamingo that shows up in the news, it's all over your timeline immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get like 40 messages with it. And the first time I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Or, oh, that's fun. And then the 40th time I'm like, yeah, I've seen this 40 times today. Thank you. <laughs> but I appreciate it. <laughs> My sister-in-law's mom is a, was a kindergarten teacher or preschool teacher and the first time I went to their house and I walked into their kitchen there were little pigs everywhere <laughs> everywhere and sh and I asked my sister-in-law like what what's with the pigs and she says my mom told one person one time that she likes pigs yeah <laughs> that's how it happens yeah. so I feel for you <laughs> I just I, I can picture your home right now oh yes yeah it's a lot of fun <laughs> A lot of pink. And the funny thing is I don't even really like pink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much like a black, dark color type person. But it, it makes a good accent around my gray home. So <laughs> <laughs> I think the branding for the romance is also it's it's perfect, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah it works yeah. for sure. It's been so much fun. <laughs> There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with flamingos, so. <laughs> and and f the word flock. Yes, yeah. <laughs> There's so many flocking fantastic things you can say. Yes. Question two. If you could have one superpower that can have no real-world saving effects, for example, you can never overcook pasta, what would it be? Oh, hair growing. Just your own or anybody's? <laughs> <laughs> well, my own, or maybe anybody's. That would be super fun. But he's, he's walking down the street and point at people, and suddenly, like, Whoosh. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would, I mean, imagine the effect that would have on cancer patients. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yes. And male pattern balding. Yes. Eh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, but I wear extensions. So, like, I don't have them in right now, which is very not normal. But I wear extensions all the time. So that would probably be, then I wouldn't have to mess with them. Well, you can't see this. This is audio, but I'm wearing my extensions. <laughs> so. And you can't prove me wrong because, again, audio. And you look good, Craig. You <laughs> look thank, good. Thank you. I, I'm flipping it over my shoulder right now. I didn't, I didn't know purple would be your color, but there. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. Should have gone pink, though. What am I thinking? Right. <laughs> all right. Question number three. Who would play you in a movie? Um, probably Kirsten Dunst or somebody who is a super introvert and quiet and not would just sit there because <laughs> that would be me <laughs> in a movie of my life. It would be pretty boring. 
well, one day, like you know, the documentary, Pink Flamingo Productions, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, this, this, you can think back over your whole life, your most embarrassing favorite song. Okay. I would either have to go with some type of crazy rap song I used to listen to, but my parents, my mom actually used to sing to me, have patience. Have patience, don't be in such a hurry. So every once in a while... I actually happen to know yeah. that song. <laughs> so I sing it to my kids, and every once in a while, I'll just be, like, cleaning the house, and it'll just pop into my head. So, And my son's like, oh, my God, Mom. <laughs> so probably that. Question five. What is the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Um, Sushi? Because <laughs> it's gross, but... That's probably, yeah, I don't really eat weird. I eat a lot of different types of foods, but nothing super weird. All right. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today and giving us the inside scoop on Pink Flamingo Productions. Uh, encourage everybody to check out Pink Flamingo Productions at pinkflamingoproductions.com. It was delightful to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And we'll see you all next time. You've been listening to Flock Talk, Talk, the podcast where we feature your favorite authors and narrators. Hosted by Craig Hart and Sarah Hannon. This podcast is produced by Pink Flamingo Productions. Productions. Editing by Craig Hart. Visit us today at pinkflamingoproductions.com. Flock Talk.